Hey everybody, before the show starts, log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to book a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions solved. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham, and on this episode, what we're talking about is how to not screw yourself as an artist. Now check this out. We're going to be talking about the record deal portion, as I always talk about on this channel, but I'm adding some more key pieces, and if you are new to this channel, well then you're in for a crazy ride, okay? So now... As always, we got to get into copyright explained, and I recommend that you watch it because without watching that, it, some things may be a little bit confusing in today's episode. So if you want to donate to the channel, you can do so right over here. If you want to skip copyright explained, you can do so right by, uh, you can uh, you can do so right down below. But here we go. Copyright: the sole right which an author has in their own original literary compositions. The exclusive right of an author to print, publish, and then their own literary works for their own benefit. Now, of course, there are two main rights of copy that the music industry operates and revolves around, and that's the masters and the publishing. And the masters is referred to as the sound recording copyright. Sound recordings as in records, masters, phonogram, or the audio recording file, i.e. the WAV, MP3, AIFF, of the composition and or song. Now, you can collect your master recording royalties or the proceeds due from the sale and streaming of the master recording via your distributor like TuneCore DistroKid, and if you have a major label deal, then it's them, all right? Now, you can also collect the performance royalties via the master sound recording via Sound Exchange and PPL over in the UK. Sound Exchange is based here in America. And if you are outside of America, any other organization that collects these sound recording performance royalties are referred to as neighboring rights. Now, publishing is referred to as a performing arts copyright here in America. Okay, performing arts as in the composition, sheet, music, MIDI files, publishing, or song to be performed. You can collect the performance royalties for the composition via BMI, CSAC, ASCAP here in America and PRS over in the UK. And other countries have their own performing rights organization as well to collect those royalties for you. All right. Now, you can collect the mechanical royalties due from the composition via Harry Fox, Music Reports and the Mechanical Licensing Collective here in America. You can also collect your mechanical royalties over in the UK from MCPS. So now. Lyric Fine right here. You can get your lyric display royalties from Lyric Fine and Music Match. But that's that. Let's go through the six rights of copyright to be exercised to the fullest extent of the United States Code under Title 17. And that's the right to reproduce. The right to reproduce the copyrighted work in copies or phono records, physical or digital format. The right to prepare derivative works. The right to prepare derivative works based upon the copyrighted work. The right to distribute, the right to distribute copies or phono records of the copyrighted work to the public by sale or other transfer of ownership or by rental, lease or lending. And then we have the right to public performance, the right to perform the copyrighted work publicly, the right to public display, the right to display the copyrighted work publicly and the right to digital performance. And that's the right to digital audio transmission performance. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching Copyright Explained. Look, I got to put a clip in right here where... N-O-R-E, Nori, talks about, you know, why hip-hop is the way it is. Now, this isn't technically hip-hop. This is just for the entire music industry. This is what he said, right? This is, this is from the I Am Athlete podcast. But we are going to get into that, and then we're going to jump into the preface. So let's use this. Actually, you know what? Let's swap it around. Let's do the preface first, and then I'm going to put that clip in, and then we'll go into the video. Here we go. All right, everybody, we are back inside of the computer, and here's what we will be discussing today. As you can see, I have my uh, highly uh, proper suit and tobacco pipe going on here because we're going to spill some game in today's video. All right, so now, here's what we will discuss. The artist royalty, the advance, calculating your debt and repayment terms, and these are some new type of repayment uh, terms used with major indies out there and, um, you know, uh, uh, smaller record labels that are kind of changing the narrative. And here's some idea. And there, there are some ideas that I will be presenting as well and that I've talked about before on this channel. But in today's video, we're really honing in on the record deal portion of any deal and of any 360 deal that may be in place. And this is and mainly it's going to deal with not screwing yourself from the jump 
with the artist royalty and the advance. All right. Now, it's going to get pretty heavy, but I always come heavy on this channel. So here we go. You want me to explain to you what hip hop is? That's what I'm talking about. Right, let to get me explain to. to you what hip hop is. The worst loan you could ever make. When you sign to a major label, you that money that they give you, let's let's say they give you 800 grand, right? That's a loan. You have to pay back that loan with interest. So if you don't make back that 800 grand, what they do is they put you in the red, but you can still be hot and you didn't make back that 800 grand. So you can still be hot. So they'll give you another album. And they'll give you an, instead of 800 grand, they'll give you 1.2 this time, right? So now, but you're in a, still in the hole for that 800. You understand? But you now you got another 1.2. And if you don't make that, then you're just in the red for both, both. And this is a loan with interest that you don't get nothing out of. Hip hop is not meant for the artist to win. Hmm. It's, it's wow. never been meant for the artist to win. And the more and more you learn, the more and more you read your contracts, the more and more it's disturbing. And that's why labels like QC is winning, because they own it and they're trying to put their artists on to gain. That's what, that's what a real, like when you hear that Jay-Z gave Rihanna back her masters, that's a real move. Because that's saying, I don't only want my own shit back, but I want something, I want other people to have it back as well. Now, I've had to explain what the artist royalty is in several facets on this channel, but I never gave a definition. So in today's video, we will use a definition. Check it out. Now, the artist royalty. What is the artist royalty? Well, the artist royalty is your share of streaming revenue and album sales after recoupment of your repayment of all debt. Oh, excuse me. After recoupment or your repayment of all debt incurred in the album cycle. All right. So or I should really say for the life of the album, all right? So in this case, this is 100%, and this is your artist royalty right here. Now, after you've paid back, in a traditional sense, after you paid back 100% of what you owe outside of this little percentage you get right here, then this unlocks from the pizza, and you can now get all of your artist royalty, and you can start getting paid out, okay? So that's how that works. OK, now let's talk about this advance. This is the golden ticket, the golden ticket that makes you drop your pants and get get busy. L literally, um, it is the amount of predetermined earnings paid to you up front before any streaming revenue is generated. That is very true. See, if not advanced with the right type of artist royalty percentage, then you will not be able to repay it. OK, let's read that again. If not advanced with the right type of artist royalty percentage, then you will not be able to repay it. So that right there lets you know that from the jump of the deal, if the percentage doesn't match up with the amount that you were loaned and all of the budget that goes into producing the masters and you run the math, you can tell if your deal is underwater before you even sign or not. And you have a choice at that point. You have a choice up to the very minute before you put the pen to the paper to decide if you want to do it or not. Now, advance too low and you will need to find additional loans elsewhere. This is very true. And this is a very hard task to do. So you got to you got to do it right now. Advance too high and you can kiss your masters away to a 20 year bid in upstate New York, Ohio or Louisiana, Louisiana somewhere. All right. So that's what it is. I'm glad you understand this now. Uh, so let's talk about this advanced check. All right. The upfront money that you get before any streaming revenue is generated. All right. Let's talk about this check. Let's do some calculations. All right. So the magic formula here. Now, I've talked about this on the Keish Cole video. Sure, I have. I did. All right. I've talked a bit about this on the TLC video. I did. Sure, I did. You know, um, I talked about this. I think I talked about this on the 100 percenters video. I know I talked about it. Look, I'm, I'm tired of saying what I talked about it on. But, you know, you all know me for breaking these deal points down. This is broken down a different way. So this came from last week, but I, I changed it a little bit. So now check it out. This is how you get the rate that you're going to pay back, uh, you know, your debt with. So the reason why this is 7.5% is because it got reduced because we had to take the artist is responsible for paying the mechanical royalty, as you heard me say plenty of times over. And the artist is also responsible for paying the producer royalty. So after the mechanical got taken out and the producer royalty got taken out and any other 
sneaky royalties like a 1% engineering royalty got taken out or a manager or executive producer royalty got taken out. This is what this particular artist was left with, 7.5%. And at this case, that is 13.33 times the dollar. And let's just run some numbers here. This is how we know. This is where you're going to know your deal is underwater. So if you were loaned one million dollars or an artist advance, this is the earnings that you would have earned as an artist with your royalty. This ain't got nothing to do with the budget. This is your money. OK, you just got advanced a million dollars for into the future for whatever, whenever you were going to get that million dollars in earnings. Now, check it out uh, for your seven and a half percent cut. All right. So now, additionally, to complete the album, you needed half a million dollars for the recording budget. You also needed half a million dollars for marketing and promo budget. All right. You needed two hundred fifty dollars in additional tour support for when stuff went bad and you had to pay for things on the tour. I, that's tour support should be called tour insurance because that's really what it is. All right. And then you got one hundred thousand dollars for ancillary support for per diems and odds and ends and stuff like that. So. Between your attorney, your manager, you, yourself, and your team, you all open up the full budget to $2.35 million or $2,350,000. And according to your final, your final calculated artist royalty of 7.5%, we took that rate, we multiplied it by, uh, by the rate and the uh, original loan, total loan amount, and this is how much you got to pay back, $31,332,550 on a $2.35 million loan to call it even. Or, this is what you would do, I'm just reiterating, tally up the budget and multiply it against your artist royalty, then you will see your projected recruitment rate and amount. Okay? Cool. I think everybody has it. I don't believe I, if I lost you, just put something in the comments. All right? So, here we go. Now, we got to equate it again. This is the same thing. So, to call it even, it would look like this. Eight billion two hundred forty five million four hundred and seven thousand eight hundred and ninety four billion streams to pay back the debt or five point four times platinum on each album, according to the RIAA. To pay this back. So you'd have to go almost five and a half times platinum to pay back this if it was just based on record streams. But it's not. It's it. Most people have a 360 deal now. OK, so let's keep going. Calculating your debt. Now, I put together a rate sheet so you all could see. I won't get too deep into this. You know, I realize this is a lot for you. This is where most artists bottom out. Now, remember, and I put it, I should have typed something up here. These percentages are representative of uh, representing the mechanical royalty being removed and the producer royalty being pulled out as well and then any other extra royalties this is your bottom out artist royalty and this is what it will look like right so you got your 13.33 times the dollar the please sir not too deep meaning i give you a dollar you give me 13 dollars and 33 cents back you got the 10 percent artist royalty i give you a dollar you give me 10 back that's to get the lube stage right there all right and then you got the 15 percent situation where if i give you a dollar you give me six dollars and 66 cents back that's the ugh. Right. But you took it anyway. All right. So and then you got the dollar and the 20 percent artist royalty. If I give you a dollar, you give me five bucks back. That's just above water, like the keeping your head above water. You know, what I'm saying good times right there. All right. Because you're feeling good a little bit, kind of. All right. And then you got the 25 percent rate area. I give you a dollar. Then you give me four dollars back to call it even. All right. That's not too bad. We got a little bit of leverage. We're doing OK, but you could be doing better. If this is where you got your deal at, you did a really good job. But you you yeah, you could do a lot better than that, all right? Um, and it just depends on the amount of money you got. You know what I'm saying? So in this case, if I gave you a million, you give me four back. And that's not bad. You know what I'm saying? So here we go at 30%, a 70-30 deal. You know, I give you a dollar, you give me $3.33 $3 back, all right? That's leverage. At a 70-30 deal, you got some serious leverage when you're doing a record deal. All right. Now, we haven't even gotten to the joint venture, but let's just go ahead and go to the 40, the 60, 40, two and a half times the dollar. I give you a dollar. You give me two dollars and 50 cents back. What's the problem? More leverage. You're doing good. All right. Ain't nobody tripping. Let's just go level up a bit. Now we flipping the bag at this point. OK, check this out. Uh, I give you a dollar. You give me two dollars back on the 50 50 joint venture deal. OK, 
That's just what it is. All right. So um, in this case, this could go either way. This is where independents kind of stop um, with the deal, their deal points, because major labels will do a joint venture deal when you have a severe amount of leverage. All right. And you have an adequate team to handle the load. Uh, so because joint, joint venture deals can be good or they can be bad, but it all determine it all is determined on, on your team and what you can handle with your team. Because if you don't have a team, you got to step back down the ladder because you, the label is going to be handling all those other tasks. If you do have a team, this is where you can you can reside. OK, so if we move up the ladder and we get into a distribution deal like a P and D, if those if those even exist, you can do like a 75% artist royalty, but at that point, you'd be doing it based on a company and not on an artist situation. But anyway, all right, so if I give you a dollar, you give me a dollar and 30 cents back. And then finally, at the 80 20 level, if I give you a dollar, you give me a dollar and 25 cents back. That's Master P status. That's the super boss level. Okay, let's keep rolling. Now, what do I mean by removing this mechanical? Step one to keeping your artist royalty pure is to change the narrative and remove the mechanical royalty from the responsibility of the artist completely. Now, for independence, this makes calculations way easier. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because when Apple Music has to issue mechanical royalties, they don't pay it to the label anymore. I mean, sometimes they do, but when it comes to indies and major indies, they're paying it to the MLC, HFA, and music reports. Like TikTok is paying out the music reports. Facebook is paying the music reports. You know what I mean? Peloton is paying to HFA. You know what I'm talking about? Spotify is paying to the MLC. And so what I'm saying is if all of these organizations are tapping in and collecting that money for you and you just go direct and collect from each one of them as a publisher – and as a songwriter independently, why should the label reduce the mechanicals anymore? You know, that clause, and some of you all know what I'm talking about, in those record contracts where it says, uh, we will pay you a reduced statutory rate. We will reduce it 25%. It, that, that's not even necessary anymore. It's like they're handling all the math over here now. Just pay it out to the publishers and call it macaroni. So this is one way to keep your artist royalty pure. The other way is removing the producer royalty, all right? Now, I'm not saying don't pay the producer. What I'm saying is to keep the artist royalty pure is to change the narrative and remove the producer's royalty from the responsibility of the artist completely as well. Because if the label is going to pay for production of these masters, they should also pay for the producer royalties and not the artist, right? It's just, it's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's just what it is, all right? So now here's my repayment terms. Include a clause to pay back with cash. This is what I highly propose, but I'm on the side of the labels too. I don't feel that labels should go broke, and I don't feel that artists should be able to pay back with cash right at the jump. So here's what I propose. Set an amount of years before you're eligible to pay back the debt. This is the label position, right? So let's say, hey, artists, you can pay me back with cash starting at three years, and you can only pay me back in increments of $10,000 every six months. You know what I'm saying? Or you can only pay me back in increments of $250,000 every nine months. You know what I'm saying? To just so that the label has a chance to make money. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Artists, you know, it's no shade to you all, but I just got to throw that in there for labels. Now, request a larger artist royalty post recoupment. You know what I mean? Um, after you're done recouping your debt, maybe bump it up 5%. You know what I'm saying? So you get 25% instead of 20. And lastly, request a pull from royalties after your 30% recoup, 50% recoup, and 75% recoup. What do I mean? I'm just saying that all the money that you recoup 15% of that 30% level that you made to get paid for it. 50%, 15% of that 50% you recoup, get paid for it. 15% of the 75% you recoup, get paid for it. And finally, when you get to 100%, get the rest. And that way you can eat. And now there are numerous indies doing this type of deal. I recommend that you request this from major indies. This ain't happening at the majors, but this show ain't just for major labels. So anyway... Now, here's our final verdict. Create leverage first. I can't say this enough. Please stop going to get these first. First bag is the worst bag. That's my slogan. The first bag is the worst bag. Create leverage first. Record deals are for strategic support only. All right? I don't care. And I'm talking about all the indie record labels that call me. 
All right. Strategic support. All right. Especially the ones just getting off the ground. You know, so artists don't seek out record deals early unless you want to open your. I still haven't added that A to the back of this thing. I don't, maybe it's just going to be a permanent typo. I don't know. Unless you want to open your back door. Anyway, hey, look, I'm out of here. All right, everybody, that's been today's show. Thanks for watching. Make sure you download all the free stuff down below, the profit maximization checklist, the split sheet down below. Make sure you log on to musicmoneymakeover.com. Text me 470-291-5767. That's 470-291-5767. All right, get in contact with me. Book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com, and I will see you all later. Peace. Everybody, thanks for watching the show. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to get a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions answered and solved. Thanks for watching.